Hi, I'm Carl Lewis, and this is the Bet Central Podcast. Welcome to the latest episode of the Betcoza Formula One podcast. I'm your host, Sean Parker, and I'm joined by Mary Ann Wakefield, a fantastic friend of the show. Um, she actually got hold of me uh, on, <laughs> she texted me <laughs> what I need to refer to um, on her, her social media. So before I even say hello to her, um, Lali's life on Instagram, that's L-A-L-L-I-E-S, life. And then Lali's F1 on TikTok, please. Praying hands emoji. <laughs> um, yeah, Thank so, you. I mean, f- fantastic F1 content creator on social media, asking the right questions, um, giving her fantastic uh, input. And uh, obviously she, you know, is worthy of being on the Petcoza F1 podcast, um, on the Pet Central F1 podcast powered by Petcoza. And... Um, Lali, let's get into it. Um, welcome to welcome back to the show. Thank you. Um, it was the, Azer- the Azerbaijan Grand Prix this past weekend. It was the introduction of a new format for the sprint race. It was the first sprint race of the season. There are a couple more um, that will come later on. I think another six more, five, yeah, five or six more. And um, obviously, the big change is that there's only one practice session. Um, let's just get into it. Do, do you think that um, one practice session is enough for the drivers to and the teams to work on a setup and to really get settled for the weekend? So I spoke about this on, on Lali's F1 on, on my TikTok, where I said that because of the four-week break and all the changes on the cars... I don't believe that one practice session for Baku was okay. Um, I think in general, if it's week week after week, a P1 could be fine, a pre-practice session one, because that's how they do it in F2. But I really felt, especially Baku and the street circuit and those tight corners, and because of the circuit it was, I felt that that was just a mess of a race. I mean practice session and then quali it was red flagged yellow flagged it was a mess and i don't think it should have worked there yeah a lot of drivers uh, several drivers found it really difficult to to get a good setup and really get comfortable with the car uh lewis hamilton was one of them carlos Sainz, as well and you know another something else that that or one of the other criticisms around the sprint race was that the qualifying for the main Grand Prix is moved to the Friday and the yes. sprint race quality is on the Saturday. So the traditional, you know, Saturday, Sunday, Formula One weekend has been turned upside down when there, there is a sprint race uh, happening. Do you think that uh, the organizers will possibly look at reverting to um, qualifying for the main race on the Saturday? Well, I believe they should because, first of all, when we had sprint races come in last year, um, it, this wasn't the situation. So the FIA came with the new rules, like within the first in the week before we started last week uh, on Friday. Um, so I do feel that they changed the rules as and when. Um, but also for Formula One, you see, it's entertainment. So they want all out racing on the weekend. So Saturday, Full well, 17 laps of racing was great for them. So, but for my, what I said in my um, video was we need to look at entertainment versus safety because for me, it was not, it's not safe. At least have two practice sessions and then the quality on the Saturday, like we used to have. I mean, the cars, the, the teams are still getting data off the cars and all of that kind of stuff. So I believe that we actually didn't really see the cars perform as they should have. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, There is this sort of balance that, you know, they need to find between entertainment and, you know, keeping keeping the drivers safe. Um, But, you know, Liberty Media is in, and, you know, they do see Formula One as a form of entertainment. Uh, Christian Warner spoke on Sunday evening 
after the race saying that one of the reasons um, for introducing the new format for this weekend was that they would be able to to you know um, listen to feedback from the various stakeholders, the drivers, um, the teams, and obviously the fans as well, and even the broadcasters, so that if there were any changes before the second uh, sprint race uh, in Austria at the end of June, that you know they would be able to tweak and just uh, adjusting. So, yeah, um, you know, teething teething problems are always going to rear their head. And I think we're just glad that there, you know, there there weren't any major issues uh, during the sprint race. Obviously, that the coming together of um, Max Max Verstappen and George Russell was quite entertaining. And if and in fact that 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 that, that even extended to after the sprint race, where where Max mm-hmm. had a, a couple of words. Your take on that? Uh, I think, you know, Max just wants his way and, and the way, and George did say, look, you know, it happens. So uh, it is what it is, Sean, really. It's it's yeah. just drivers up against each other. It's nothing really. Yeah. Do you, um, I mean, it definitely seems as, uh, or seemed as if the damage to the RB19 side part did affect um, Verstappen being able to close the gap to, to Leclerc. And he he ended up finishing third um, uh, in the sprint race. Obviously, Sergio Perez, he, his Red Bull teammate, won the sprint and, and, and also went on to win the Grand Prix. What did you make of the way that Perez um, drove on Saturday? Look, I think, you know, Perez is very good with street circuits. And uh, Max is a more of a traditional circuit person. That's what I feel. Um, and I think because Perez has got some points under his belt, it's almost like he's hungry for it. And and I enjoyed I enjoyed his racing because he wasn't kept back. He went for what he wanted. So meaning that you you saw pure racing and not team racing, saying you race here, you 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 stay second. So we saw the drivers. We saw Perez in his full racing mode if you can say it like that. Yeah. He definitely seems to be able to really thread the RB19 through these tight street circuits. I mean, you know, Baku at one point um, on the track, it's it's only seven meters wide, you know, and these Formula One cars are, they are, are big, you know, it's a, the length of a, a large SUV. Um, you know, we know how wide that, that front, um, the front of the car is so yeah i mean hats off to to the mexican he's really shown you know a lot of grit and determination and definitely really you know sort of needed a strong weekend where he could you know really reignite his his title bid um sunday's race came and obviously you know uh charles Leclerc after after having two dnfs in the first um opening three races he then managed to put uh, the Ferrari on pole for the sprint race and for the Grand Prix on Sunday. Uh, obviously, it wasn't meant to be because the RB19 straight line speed is just absolutely phenomenal, and you know, um, Perez was able to sort of breeze, to able to uh, breathe past Leclerc. Um, if you had to pick your driver of the day for Sunday's race, where who, who would you choose? I think Chico did really well. I would say Chico. Yeah. He basically just sort of, um, you know, built on what he had done on Saturday. You know, this only only the the first driver to to claim con- uh, to claim multiple wins in Baku. It's yeah. it's, it's really it's really been a place where, yeah, exactly. He won he won the race um, last year. Yeah, Max Max won the previous year. No, it wasn't the race in in twenty twenty. But Perry is, you know, everything came together for him. He had a bit of luck um, during the safety car um, uh, period uh, or, or, or just sort of before that. Um, and but, but on the face of it, Perez was the faster car. He was, he was lapping a lot faster than Verstappen and you know, was able to keep, to really command a good lead over the, the, um, the reigning world champion. And, and I think, you know, it's, it's really tough when you have someone like Max, a character like Max, 
Lally is he's, he's he's not the he's not the the sort of best customer to deal with, particularly in a team <laughs> setup, eh? No, and you know that was I I was surprised because Warner said they because they said oh there no team orders or or something on the radio or, or not on the radio on the TV, and and Warner had said. They can race each other, it's fine, just don't race dirty or don't race, you know, be dirty towards each other. And that was surprising. But I think Horner has learned from the last time when they told Checo to stay back, everybody went off on Red Bull. And I think, yes, he wants Max to win, obviously. But I think he's learned that his fans and everybody else actually wants Checo to win when he can. So I was surprised by that. And and I was actually happy for him because he he really rode that track amazingly well. It was he was excellent. Yeah, he was. He was just he had a, a real sort of perfect weekend. Um, if we if we look at you know, I think that you know Perry is obviously he needs to focus on his closest driver or not focus on 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 Max, but you know he he knows that it's probably going to be an inter-team battle um, for the championship if he can if he can maintain sort of point scoring finishes as the season continues but what do you think the Red Bull team in general would make of Ferrari's pace um, particularly in the hands of Charles Leclerc I mean we know that over over one lap the Monegasque um, uh, driver is, is rapid he, he outscored Max Verstappen in terms of pole positions last year but you know, just just what did you think of of Leclerc's weekend? What did it mean? I mean, there were there were rumors there, there were rumors circulating in in the media before the race in Baku that he was being linked with Mercedes. Um, what do you think this weekend meant to him? Look, I I actually wanted um, before going into the race and my race preview, I actually wanted him to win. Um, Ferrari, you see, they've got. That, that track was very much, because of the tight corners and the way it sits, they have good downforce on the Ferrari car to, to be able to ride that track. So that so the car was quick, it was good, but it, it just wasn't, I don't know, quick enough. It's like nobody can catch the Red Bull. But the thing is, he, he really drove well, though. Um, so, you know, I kind of feel that he may be pole for Miami as well. Um, but let's see. I think it's between him and and Chico. I think they're really going to do well in this in this upcoming race. Yeah, and then kind of moving on to Mercedes. You know, both in actual fact, Ferrari and Mercedes are. They've said that they'll bring several upgrades to to their cars at the Emilia Romagna uh, Grand Prix, and that's a fortnight after the race this um, this weekend. So another another three weeks. Hamilton, uh, Lewis Hamilton finishing sixth in the race and, you know, just kind of pointing, you know, kind of waiting until <laughs> until the new car parts arrive. Um, Mercedes, obviously, I think were on the back foot, particularly um, Hamilton, because, you know, he wasn't able to really get the car set up very, very well. Um, what's your kind of overall take in terms of what kind of weekend Mercedes had? I think it was, I think it was average. I mean... They didn't really, you could see in the race, they, even with DRS, they couldn't even catch up. Um, they were they were quite far behind. Well, not far, but uh, you know what I mean. But I just think, yeah, they need more tweaks in the car. The car is better than it was in in Saudi Arabia and, and, the, and the likes. But it's, oh, it's, it's not there yet. Let's just say they, it's not there yet. And I was surprised at Aston Martin because... They didn't do well, but Alonso did well on on the straights and the corners. A very good driver when it comes to that. But again, they lack pace. Like the red, the Red Bull, you just can't catch them. Yeah, they are. They seem to be quick uh, at every at every section of of the track. You know, as you say, down the straights and even in the kind of um, fast corners, uh, slow to medium corners as well. Um, interestingly enough. Lally, Mer uh, Merck were the fourth fastest team in in Baku after after slipping behind both Ferrari and Aston Martin. 
So yeah, it it was real kind of dummy. It was real kind of damage limit, um, like limitation for them. You know, Hamilton also, you know, at one point he was he was running in tenth, um, and obviously that is also kind of due to the to the safety car. But you know, George Russell finishing eighth behind um, Lance Stroll in in the Aston Martin. So I think yeah, Mercedes. I mean, I, I don't really see them kind of bettering those, but that. That sort, that sort of performance in in Miami uh, this coming weekend, it's going to be really tough for them. But um, yeah, they, they obviously walked away, you know, being in the points. But just seems to be uh, there's a lot of a lot of work for them to do. You know, obviously after Hamilton getting those two podiums um, uh, places, has it has it been two or was it was it one? I think it's two. I think it's two. Yeah, you got I think you had two consecutive um, podium finishes. So yeah, it's um, it's it's been really tough, and you know, obviously, you know, Red Bull being, you know, those guys sitting at the top, and they just seem to be untouchable at the moment. Um, in terms of anyone else over the weekend, um, Lali, who kind of stood out for you? Well, not stood out though, because I just think the Baku circuit was, it just it was like. The team It was a snow fest. It was a snow yeah. fest. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't an, <laughs> an, an entertaining race whatsoever. And and but for me, Alpine, I was really backing Alpine for the last two, three races. And not that I'm not backing them, but everything just went horribly wrong for them. And and I just thought, what is going on? You guys were you know, in the top five, the last race, and now we hear the cars on fire, and then it crashes, and I think in the end there were P, I don't know what, 18 or something. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's a, a good a good place for us to to end off. Um, yeah, race result, uh, the Alpines, where were they? Yeah, 14th and 15th, Lali, uh, Gasly, 14th, Esteban Ocon, 15th. Now that's um, really bad. I mean, compared to, I think they were in the top five. Yeah, and and I think it's I think you know speaking about the Alpines uh, and Ocon, that absolutely symbolic um, moment that happened on the penultimate <gasps> at the end of the penultimate uh, lap of the Grand Prix. Obviously, there's a mandatory pit stop that each driver needs to make to change tires. Ocon yeah. um, and Alpine decided, or sort of Alpine decided to bring Ocon in right at the very end of the race. And there were a couple of st- stupid people who made a decision to allow photographers to, to, to kind of set up the Park Ferme um, area prior to the race ending. And Ocon, you know, coming in, um, Lali, explain to us what exactly happened there. It was ridiculous when I watched, when I looked at it, I couldn't believe it. So the FIA had actually allowed the photographers to get into their positions already for when the race ends. And and so they're standing there in the pit lane and Ocon still needs to come in and pit. And you just see people jumping out the way and he goes in for his pit, which obviously slowed him down as well. But so you see, this is my problem with the FIA is because they're never consistent. And I saw a tweet where where this guy said, you know, the FIA, you want to complain about Lewis Hamilton's nose ring, but we nearly had a whole lot of people die in the pit lane. So, you know, you've got to pick and choose where you want to, you know, ensue your safety rules. Um, and, and this is the thing, the FIA needs to get it together. I kind of feel like sometimes every race they just make up things as they go. I've never, ever seen that. Ever. Look what happened in, in Melbourne. The race the, the race before this where there was um, Chaos. P, um car car shrapnel that that hit someone. There was a guy who jumped on a fence. You know, all these all these um, issues that uh, are happening at races where people are just, you know, being allowed in certain um, spaces or places where they are not supposed to be. So yeah, the the onboard footage of of that incident is absolutely mind blowing. In fact, I, I, I'm not sure what speed are going to be, but it looks a hell of a fast. And there's one photographer in in particular who who kind of is one of the last to make his way out of this area, and then he sees, and then he kind of walks right into into you know the path of Ocon, sees him super late, 
and he needs to, you know, die for his life. But yeah, let's just hope that this never happens again. And you're absolutely right. I fully agree with you, Lali. It's happening way too often. You know, Formula One is the pinnacle of motorsport. Um, these cars are dangerous. They are fast. They can do damage. And we don't want anything to happen to anyone, you know. So, yeah, look, that's a, a good place for us to end off. Um, Lali, thank you so much for reviewing the Azerbaijan Grand Prix with me. <laughs> I know it you know, wasn't the most uh, exciting race. Just before uh, you, you do go, I do just want you to rate it out of 10. Look, this race, I was really upset on the, the practice session one. So I'm really, I'm going to give it a five. It was, it was very average. I was upset because I really felt that the sprint race shouldn't have been on Baku, especially the street circuit and cars coming back that I have been modified where the teams don't have any data. So they're going in blindly on a Friday. So I just think it was average. It was five for me. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Thank you so much. And we will definitely have you back on the show soon. Uh, in fact, a lot sooner than you and our, our, um, <laughs> our listeners think. So um, Lali, thank you so much. And guys, don't forget to follow Lali on TikTok and Instagram. Um, Lali's life on Instagram and Lali's F1 world. Is that F1, correct? Lali's F1 on TikTok. Lali's F1 on TikTok. Yeah. Okay, cool. Excellent. Sure. Thank you so much and have a fantastic day. You too.